Hi guys, it's Kate and I know it's been a little while since I filmed or posted a video but I kind of want to explain why that is and in doing so like I hope that this video kind of makes sense to you guys and you can kind of see like where I'm coming from and I hope that it kind of makes sense. So in this video I'm going to be talking about something that not a lot of people really feel comfortable talking about and something that kind of scares people and kind of just makes people feel uneasy and vulnerable and I just hope that by talking about this I can show you guys that nobody's perfect, everyone has things that they go through and a lot of the times what we see online is not really what it may seem and everyone goes through things, it's okay to feel the way that you're feeling. So let's talk loneliness. So last year, 2019, and a little bit in even 2018, I started feeling this just overwhelming sense of loneliness. And if you guys have watched my videos for a while and you're like an OG subscriber, you guys would know. I have two siblings, I have a good group of friends, and I did have a boyfriend there for a minute. Uh, don't anymore, but uh, it wasn't like I wasn't surrounded with people and I didn't start feeling this way when I broke up with my boyfriend like I had been feeling like this even before that but especially just towards the end of 2019 which was way way past my relationship just so you guys know I don't want anyone thinking this has to do with that this was months and months and months after that ended. So this, 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 and this and that have no correlation. I, I've definitely been feeling this way for a while. Just this overwhelming sense of loneliness. And it was like I could be in a group of people and just feel lonely. And I could be even having fun in that moment. But the second I get back into my car by myself, I just felt sad and lonely. Kind of went through some stuff uh, towards the end of 2019 that really left me in this state of just continual sadness and almost like a depression. And I don't want to ever use that word lightly because that's not something that I would ever just throw around. I would never like throw that word around, you know, like I know people are like, oh, they didn't have that, that shirt I wanted. And it was so depressing. Like, that's not what this is. You know, this was something that was very difficult and it's hard for me to talk about, but I have never seen um, being vulnerable as being weak. And so I hope that through me talking about this, it helps someone. But I went through something that was completely out of my control and something that didn't really have a lot of closure, something that just abruptly happened. And it really messed me up because I, I felt that my trust had kind of been broken. And I felt that I had lost people that I cared about and loved without really any explanation. And it's it was just very tough for me to kind of let go of something that had been in my life for such a long time. And I know I'm being very vague, but I just, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna be too specific and I don't wanna, you know, call anybody out or anything like that. I'm not, this is not the point of this video, but I just wanna explain like, the people that you see online, maybe even the people that you look up to, like they're going through stuff too. Nobody's perfect and nobody has everything together 100% of the time. You know, like we all go through things and whether we choose to share that or not is up to us. So I, um, I kind of went through this like depression basically. And of course it wasn't like a clinical depression. It wasn't like a seasonal depression. It was just something had happened in my life that made me continually sad every day to the point where I was crying. Every day, sometimes, um, sometimes multiple times a day. And it was really weird because if you know me, I've, I've always been like that person that's very um, joyful and happy and excited and the life of the party is what people would call me. And so to go from that, you know, bundle of energy and joy to being someone that was continually sad and angry and lonely and just um, melancholy, complaining all the time. It was 
very weird for me to see myself like that and also for my friends to see me like that knowing that that that's not who I am and it was just really really tough it was it was very tough and it still is tough the purpose of this video isn't for me to be like yeah I, I've been going through things like we all go through things but this is just me kind of explaining like how I got out of that and kind of moved on from that I think sometimes when we talk about loneliness, we tend to associate loneliness with being alone, which there's a difference. People who are single will sometimes be like, I'm so lonely or someone that maybe doesn't have a lot of friends. But the feeling of loneliness and being alone are two very different things. Like I said, you know, I could be in a crowd of people and still feel lonely because no one truly understood what I was going through and how I was feeling. And I really only, other than my family, I really only had like one or two people that I really felt that I could go to to kind of explain why I was feeling this way. Because it's hard to be vulnerable, it's hard to cry in front of people. And this was a kind, the kind of situation that I couldn't talk about it without crying. And I didn't wanna look like you know, I, I'm just this emotionally unstable person because I tend to be very in control of my emotions. But in this situation, I it was very hard for me to control when I would start crying. You know, it was like I would see something that would remind me and I would just instantly cry. And um, it took me a lot to get past that. And I'm so glad that I am because it, it was weighing down on me to the point where I was ready to quit school. And I was literally like, I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to do any of the things that I've always wanted to do my whole life. I don't want to work in kids church. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to sing anymore. And I was planning on going to another state to intern at a church just because I wanted to get away from Michigan. I was like, I don't want to be here. I'm not happy. And I, and I, that was just this thing that I kept saying, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm just not happy. And and I was, I was projecting my unhappiness onto everyone that I came into contact with. It was like, I, I was never not complaining. I was never not talking about how I was unhappy. I was never not trying to make people understand why I was this way. I just felt like I have to explain myself and I have to make you understand why I'm different now. And there was a lot of... Um, anger towards the situation and and even a little bit of bitterness but mostly just sadness and hurt it wasn't like I was just super bitter it was mostly like just I couldn't comprehend what had happened and I was sad and there's there was one big thing that really did it for me but it was kind of a series of unfortunate events in 2019 it was like one bad thing after the next would happen and then this one big thing happened that kind of culminated everything and made me like really super like just depressed and withdrawn and unhappy. It wasn't until actually a few weeks ago when I got to go to IBC Live, which is Indiana Bible College, if you didn't know. They have like a live recording concert. There's like little mini sermonettes in between each song. And then there's like an altar call at the end. And it's a really great event. But it wasn't until I got to go to that that I truly felt like I had finally overcame what I was going through. I I kind of got to talk a lot with my friend Micah um, on the way to IBC because she went with me and we were in the car together for five plus hours just talking. And I, I kind of explained, you know, why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And, you know, she was very encouraging, very sweet. And if you're watching this, Micah, I love you. You're amazing. But I kind of got to like, you know, tell her, explain to her why I felt this way. So I kind of, you know, got it out, got that last dump of information out. And then, you know, when I got there, I, like I said, I'm surrounded by people. This lobby is just filled with probably like 200 people to the point where like you can't even get through because there's just so many people. And I still was like, I'm just like, I feel alone. Like I'm with Micah and I'm with all these people, but I, I just feel alone. I heard the song See a Victory by Elevation Worship right around the time that all this stuff started happening. 
And it kind of was like my anthem after that. You know, you take what the enemy meant for evil, you turn it for good. And I know that's obviously a scripture, but just the song was really encouraging to me. And so, you know, all throughout the concert, I'm, you know, I'm clapping when everyone else is clapping. I'm standing when everyone else is standing. And, you know, I'm, I'm not faking it, but I'm essentially just kind of going through the motions. Like, oh yeah, this is a good song. And then when we get to the end of the concert, 16 songs later, they did See a Victory, which, you know, has kind of been like my anthem in this whole journey. And they go into the song, Fight My Battles. And then they go into the song, Victory Belongs to Jesus. And I just lost it. Like I was just sobbing my eyes out and just really like hearing those words and just like taking them in and just kind of just crying out to God, like, you know, please take this situation and turn it for good. Or if the situation can't change, give me peace. And that's really what I was crying out and praying for was give me peace and give me my joy back, please. Like, I know I have to be a part of that, that resolution as well. I have to, you know, purpose to be joyful and to keep that peace that God has given me. But I also need you to help me. And I, I was probably just sobbing with my face in the chair for probably like 40 minutes and I was just like out of it after that for a while um just face completely covered in tears beat red like just sweating like and I, I really haven't prayed like that since I don't even know like 2018 probably to the point where I was just like I couldn't even speak I was just so enthralled with the presence of God and as soon as I, you know, kind of came out of that, I was like, like, I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace and love and joy from, from God. And I knew in that moment, like I knew I'm free of this situation and I'm free of this feeling. And after that, we went to this really fun, um, kind of get together at someone's Airbnb and we were there for a while playing games and just having fun. And I, I just felt like my old self again, because I was being, you know, loud and crazy and fun and exciting. And like, that was me before all of this happened. And I was like, whoa, like I'm back, like Caitlin's back. And it was so weird for me to just be myself and not feel like I'm, I'm trying too hard. I'm putting up a facade. Like I just felt so free. And I've just been feeling like that ever since this event. And so I'm really, really thankful that God made a way for me to go because for a second there it looked like I couldn't go because I couldn't find anyone to drive with me and I didn't really want to go alone and stay by myself but Micah was able to go at the last minute and I'm just so thankful because it wasn't the event itself that did it but just the way that God really showed up for me at this event just really changed my mindset and changed my situation. Deuteronomy 31 6 says that God will never leave us or forsake us and sometimes we believe the opposite. We're like, God has left me. God's not listening to me. God doesn't care about me. But the truth is, he does. And everything is in his timing. And we can't rush it just because we want to see results now, now, now. Psalms 38, 5 through 6 talks about casting our cares upon the Lord. And I think sometimes like we talk so much to everyone else about our problems, but we don't talk to God about them. We're like, I'm so angry, I'm so upset, I'm so hurt. We're talking to our friends, but we're not on our knees crying out to God saying, God, I'm feeling this way and I need you to come through for me. Instead, we're like, hey, can I talk to you about, you know, what I'm going through? And like we wanna, and that's okay. We wanna talk to our friends and we wanna feel like we have people we can go to, but we need to really shift the way that we're so vulnerable sometimes with people to being vulnerable with God and just being honest with God because God sees everything. God sees how we're feeling and God knows how we're feeling. So we may as well just be like, hey God, I'm really trying here and it's really tough. Proverbs 18, 24 talks about God being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And in my situation, I was lucky enough to be going through this with my family. We were all feeling this way and we, found, we just really stuck together and we're a lot closer than we've ever been, I think, because we had to go through something together. And 
even in those situations where you you still feel like but i don't want to completely tell my brother or sister everything because i don't want them thinking that i'm weak or that i'm depressed even though i am but god is that friend that sticks closer than even our brother and our sister and our best friend and that we can really just go to and talk to and and find solace in. Psalms 147 verse three says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And when I tell you guys that I was brokenhearted in this situation, it doesn't even begin to explain the hurt that I felt. You guys know like I've been in a relationship before and I've you know talked to guys before and I obviously we've ended those things and I've ended friendships over stupid things and that that hurts you that hurts your heart when you're invested in someone else but this situation was like a level of heartbreak that I've never been through I've never been through a tough breakup ever I've never been through that tough of a friend friendship breakup but this was like another level of like hurt and I was really truly just broken hearted and I felt like I will never get past this I'll never get over this um and God helped me to get over it and to feel just free and happy and at peace. And so I want to say to you and whoever's watching this that Jesus loves you and he cares for you and he sees what you're going through. And he wants to help you in the same way that he helped me. And being emotional and being vulnerable does not make you weak. It in fact makes you strong. And it shows that you have a sensitive heart, you know? And of course we wanna be sensitive in the presence of God, but it's okay to be sensitive in front of others as well. And to show that you're human and to show that not everyone is perfect because in this world, it's just so easy to get caught up in the social media politics aspect of everything where you want to portray this image of who you are but it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to be hurting but you have to allow God to help you and once I finally really truly just gave it all and said God I can't carry this load anymore I need you to help me and take it away that was when I finally got that peace and that reassurance. And now I'm doing school, I'm doing kids church, I'm singing, I'm doing all the things that I said I wasn't gonna do. I'm not going to another church this summer to intern. Um, I wanna stay at my church and do everything I can. But all those things that I was so upset about, I just feel like I'm finally free. And I hope that this video will help you to feel that way as well. And if you're going through something, just know that you can cast your cares upon the Lord and he will hear you and he will help you. He loves you. I love you. And I want to see you succeed. God wants to see you succeed. And so if you're going through something, please don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to talk to you about it. But also, if you don't feel comfortable talking to someone else, talk to God. He's listening. He loves you and he cares for you. See you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.